Welcome back to We're Open. Today's guest was the Director of Global Community Relations for SOE. Let's hear about their experience. Hey, Linda, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so happy to be here. You have no idea. How did you end up at SOE? When I moved down to the U.S. to be with my husband, whom I met in EverQuest, I couldn't get a green card for four years. During that time, I volunteered as a guide on EverQuest, learned everything I needed to know about customer service and how to look after players. Once I got my green card, I got into games journalism, went to the Sony conventions and that sort of thing, dressed up as a dwarf. And eventually all of this played into getting hired as a senior community manager and then global director. Director of community. One of the first things I did was create a player guide for Free Realms. The guide never came out because, of course, we're in the video era. All you can have are guides that are online because they get updated all the time. I was also writing articles about Free Realms. I interviewed Lara Lynn McWilliams a couple of times. As mentioned, you went from the Global Community Relations Manager to the Director of Global Community Relations. What's the difference? They're both the same job. I managed a team as well as being directly involved myself. But community managers, what they do is they help to communicate with the player base, talking back and forth between the devs and the players. And we also provide what we now call trust and safety services, which is making sure that there are no bullies in the schoolyard. All game companies have at least a community manager. We just happen to have a lot because Sony Online Entertainment had a lot of games. I got to assign who was on what game, make sure that the right personalities on the right game, manage schedules. I attended a lot of the meetings with the senior staffs and also meetings with the marketing team when they were getting ready to do promotions and advertising for products. My community managers would report into me, this is what the players think about all of these different topics, and then I'd carry that forward up the line. Did the whole community team work on all SOE games, or were there any just assigned to Free Realms? For at least a period of time, there's a primary manager on a game, and then everybody also works together. On Free Realms, we had a couple of community managers that cycled through. The community team really seemed like a family. You were in so many videos, photos, and conventions together. People who are drawn to community management believe in building well, communities. There is a way that we can all interact online. It provides a social circle for people who might otherwise not be able to leave their small town or even in some cases, like my husband, who's quite significantly handicapped. He can't just, you know, trot down the road and run to the bar. I can tell you that from our earliest days in EverQuest, we have largely a group of friends that grew up through that. It is like a family. So people who become community managers understand understand that family feeling. The team did a great job bringing that into the game. So what were the conventions like? Primarily before my time, the community team used to go around as a group to things like Dragon Con or Gen Con, but that's really, really expensive. One thing we did do, every year we'd host a really big convention in Vegas. It used to be called the SOE Fanfare, and then later it was called SOE Live. And that was a place where we would have anywhere from two to 3,000 players of all of the different games that we made. And the entire community team was there to run the conference, along with a lot of the volunteers guides from EverQuest. There was always uh, big dinners with stage shows that I was very lucky to be able to host. We had panels where the devs from the various games would get together and talk to players who were specifically interested in that game and finding out how much games had changed their lives for good, how the games had helped them through very difficult parts in their lives. You'd be surprised at how different it is giving feedback in person. Free Realms, for instance, always had panels. Players present would design a creature or design a quest. They always came back with so many wonderful ideas. And he did a lot of cosplay at the conventions with the signature character. I have always played a dwarf in most games. And in EverQuest, certainly my main character was a dwarf. I had my play character, then I had the more official one that I used to use when I was a volunteer guide. And her name was Brass. And I loved that character so much that Brass eventually became my favorite cosplay character of all time. I just like love cosplay in general, so I do a lot of other cosplay. It was a great costume. That wasn't your first EverQuest character, though. You initially played as a female and faced issues? Oh my god, yes. That was back in the old, old bad days. At least 95% of the players were male. EverQuest was the first fully 3D MMO that I'm aware of. So it drew millions and millions of people, a lot of whom had no experience in how to interact online. I made an elf and was immediately harassed. So I thought, oh, well, I'll make a big, husky barbarian woman. Still the same sort of thing. Start getting tells, just really rude tells. You don't 
don't know whether I'm male or female. So what what are you doing? It was actually one of the things that got me very interested in joining the guide program because the guide program would contain a lot of that. They would talk to people about their behavior online. And if they continue to be badly behaved, they would then, you know, give them timeouts or perhaps even recommend them to be removed from the game. A couple of weeks ago, there was guys used female voice changers and started playing an FPS game. They're highly skilled guys, highly ranked. The moment that people thought they were female, they started being treated as if they didn't know what they were doing. So we've still got a long ways to go. But I'll say that in particularly the MMO space, it's changed a lot mainly because more women are playing now. Our kids grew up playing with us. My son's now 36. Seven, and we have three grandkids who now play with us. So it's much more of a family thing. It's more inclusive. And nobody's going to put up with that stuff anymore. I'm glad it's getting better, even if it still needs work. Back to Free Realms, you hosted a lot of audio and video podcasts. With the podcast, those existed long before I joined. They were run by the community team. It was like a news roundup and they were very well received. The company realized that, you know, we could do videos of have the devs on stage and talking about what we're doing on all the games. We started out kind of rough, but we practiced week over week and we learned a lot by watching other people who did professional video work online. And so it would always be like we changed the way the couch was set up. The first couch we had, the devs would just sort of slap slide down looking really uninterested because that's what you do on a couch. Eventually we took away the couch cushions and then they looked ever so much more intelligent. And then we started having community managers in the room taking questions from the audience. I had so much fun with that. They were so much fun to watch. So you were with SOE a little after they were acquired by Daybreak. What was that transition like? Scary really scary. I poured my heart and soul into that job and the company and the games. When a game company gets bought out, what usually happens is that there are massive staff reductions. And that certainly happened. And I was let go. And that was one of the worst moments of my life. Luckily, within three weeks, I was snapped up by Tryon Worlds down in the San Francisco Bay Area. But then some years later, they were bought. But that's business. I still encourage people to get into the gaming industry. But I always encourage them to also understand that these are businesses. So I spent a couple of years just doing independent consulting for community and customer support, and then started working on the services side, where we provide customer support, community management, moderation, trust and safety, QA. I get to work with all the game companies. I know I've got a great steady job that I'll keep forever, but I still get to be a gamer. I think I've finally found what I'm best at and what I love. I'm really glad to hear that. So did you have a favorite memory while working for SOE? The first time I was playing with our oldest grandson and he realized we were on side-by-side -side computers, that creature there is actually me. And here, look, I'll wave. So I had my character wave and he saw it on his screen. And that same delight, the same thing that I felt the first time I entered an online 3D world was relived for me in that moment. It must be great sharing your passion with your grandkids. You actually learned about FRS through this podcast. What do you think? I am so thrilled about that. I signed up for their beta already, so I can hardly wait to see more because this is the game I want to play with my granddaughter. She's really, really smart and she is going to love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Linda. It was truly amazing hearing your story. Thank you so much. And, you know, more power to Free Realm Sunrise. I love it. Bye now. A big thank you to Linda for joining us today. Our next interview will be talking about it. Subscribe to hear more.